I'm John Forty. Coming up next, I'll be speaking with Ayanga Bokamba, Executive Director of Sprocket. That's next on the St. Paul Forum. Welcome to the St. Paul Forum. I'm John Forty. With me today is Ainga Bokamba, Executive Director of Sprockets, the new Executive Director of Sprockets. Sprockets is an after-school or an out-of-school hours program for St. Paul youth. Welcome, Ainga. Thank you, John. So tell me about yourself. You grew up where? I grew up all over the Midwest. Okay. My parents are um, academicians. My mother's a librarian. My father's in linguistics and uh, they would move all over getting ready to do graduate work or apply for jobs, et cetera, and of course took us with them. So I grew up in Iowa City and Champaign-Urbana, Illinois, and Madison, Wisconsin, and in parts of Africa. So with that smorgasbord of places, we're honored that you chose to stop here. Yes, and, thank you. And, and get a job here. So you've been in Sprockets how long now? I believe this is my 42nd day. Okay, that's fairly <laughs> precise. <laughs> and, uh, and you're enjoying it? I'm thrilled to be here. It is so absolutely excellent. Sprockets is a really innovative program, and uh, it's a solid program, and what I feel I get to do is, is, is come in and praise all the good work that's already been done, and then innovate on top of that. So I feel incredibly lucky to be here. Okay, tell us about the backstory, the history of Sprockets. It had a previous name, it's written somewhere in the sheet of paper, but it yeah. used to be called what? So it was started with a second shift commission. That's right. yeah. Yes, and um, lots of community stakeholders came together to just ask the question, what can we do for our young people that really advances their learning? And um, lots of things coalesced in terms of the national scene, the, late, the state scene, the local scene, and people came together and decided that they wanted to have a systems-wide approach to after-school programming. And um, we we're lucky enough to get funding from some prestigious places, uh, one being the Wallace Foundation, and uh, really launched this on a wide scale level. Okay, and now you say outside of school hours, so it includes even before school and weekend or? It primarily includes um, after school, so Monday through Friday after school. Uh, many of, the, of our organizations do offer programming on the weekends, and then of course uh, summertime, which is crucial learning time for children. Okay, um, so give me an example. I mean, you, it's full spectrum age, isn't it, from like? Yes. Kindergarten through 12th grade. Kindergarten through 12th, okay. Yes, yes. Okay. So, for example, you could have young people um, entering into a program, an arts-based program, where they're learning about photography and connecting that to uh, painting and then connecting that to literacy. Uh, we have programs that are sports-based programs um, that also have a specific homework time. Um, it's, it's an extensive network. It, we're 39 organizations strong. And all of our partners use data to improve their quality. So you're looking at uh, programs that are really uh, trying to do uh, the best they can by understanding the demographics that they're serving and also looking at uh, program quality that includes whether or not, let's say, for example, a young person is very connected to an adult, mm -hmm. uh, the, that quality interaction piece. Also, um, one of our quality indicators is whether or not young people have decision-making power in the organization if they're asked to participate in the shaping of the programming for the day or the week or the month. Um, and then finally, really looking at uh, whether or not the young people feel safe. And that is a, the, a crucial piece because, you, as you know, you can't really learn if you're not feeling that you are in a safe environment. Okay, so those three pieces, connected to an adult, yep. safe, and participating in decision-making. Correct. Has that been part of the philosophy all along? That has been part of the philosophy, and it's, it's part of a... Uh, a national uh, trend, we're looking at quality programming by deciding what those indicators are. And the, what we're using is called the YPQA, so it's the Youth Program Quality Assessment Tool. And what that basically means in uh, everyday terms at the coffee shop that you would talk about, basically it means how can parents look at our programs and know that, there are, that their kids are experiencing a quality uh, experience. We, we say that we know that they are because our our organizations are going through um, constant evaluation and reevaluation using those three indicators. 
and uh, inviting parents to examine those three indicators for themselves by doing observations uh, when their kids are in session or even when they are not. Okay. So I, I'm just kind of investigating how this all works. Mm -hmm. Sprocket, is it a consortium of 39? It's, it's, an, it's a, a feeder of 39? How do you relate to the 39 organization? You're not giving them cash, are you? We're not giving them cash, and so that's that's beautiful. They like us just because, uh, we, you know, we have, s well, word on the street is great personalities, but uh, all kidding aside, the um, what we actually function as is, is an organization that brings people together. It's a collaboration um, that basically is focused on professional development uh, for the organizations and for the parents, helping them find quality programming, and for the kids, supporting that, pro that quality programming by providing the professional development. So as you say, we don't give any cash, mm -hmm. um, but what we do give is um, this professional development, which if organizations had to pay for those um, services on their own, they would be bankrupt because these things are quite expensive. Mm -hmm. And so essentially when uh, an organization signs on to be with us, we know that they are actually uh, benefiting uh, from these these great professional development opportunities. So I'm trying to get a sense of it's like the wholesale versus retail part. I mean, it sounds like the professional development is almost like what you might call back office it, in mm. that it, it trains people and then the parent component is almost like classroom and then the retail stuff is really with the kids, isn't it? You're, you're feeding the kids, to, you're, you're routing the kids, is that? We're, we're promoting the programming that we believe supports the kids. Okay. So we, um, th the choice, of course, always rests with the parent. Mm -hmm. uh, and so when the parent can go onto our website, we have uh, a tab that is called a program finder. And basically, parents can type in uh, their child's interests, the age, whether or not they need the program to, ha to offer a scholarship, whether, whether or not they need the program to be free. And then parents can choose um, the, the programs that are available in their geographic area based on their child's interest. And what, so what we are really doing, I, I like your model of the wholesale retail and kind of what's in the front of the shop. So if you walk into any of our 39 partner organizations, whether it's um, the YWCA or the YMCA or um, any of our um, other organizations, you will see young people um, having a great time in after school time activities, whether they're building boats or doing gymnastics or what have you. What's really interesting, I think, about Sprockets is that it's content neutral. So we're not asking people to be a part of our organization based on what they do specifically with kids. It's more about how they do it. And that's where the quality piece comes in. And that's very, it's, it's, it's interesting to me. So it's a service organization, but it's not dedicated to teaching kids one thing specifically. It's essentially dedicated to activity and engagement. It's exactly. That's okay. a great way to put it. It's okay. definitely engaged. It's, it's, we believe in engagement. And we like to think about out of school time, especially in terms of those, some people refer to them as soft skills. Um, we like to think of, uh, we like to refer to them as social emotional learning mm -hmm. and looking at how does, how does resilience factor into things? Um, how about relationships with your peers or relationships with adults or this idea of self management? A lot of times we want um, kids to be sort of well behaved all the time in public and in private, but the, the question mark comes for our society, where do kids actually learn how to manage themselves? Um, certainly at home, and certainly in the classroom, but out of school time gives them a really interesting opportunity to jump into that learning and play it out in the, in the space of what they're interested in. And I'd like to believe that people behave best when they're doing what they're interested in. Um, you've been in the job for six weeks now, and yes. you've got some goals for your first year. Yes. What are those goals? Well, I have lots of goals. One is just to get to know the partner organizations, the leadership of the, the partner organizations, as well as the folks on the ground. Um, we have a lot of young um, folks in the field who are consider themselves to be teachers and youth workers. And they are incredibly dedicated. And I, I love to go to site, just go on site visits and, and watch people do what they do best and just watch them in their genius. Um, I also am trying to connect to as many people as possible. The um, landscape here in St. Paul is very interesting because you have a system where people are working across silos and having these rich conversations. And since I'm new to the game, I'm just sort of ins inserting myself into the existing dialogue. So it's been, it's been quite a learning experience so far. 
So when you first come on, you just kind of want to watch it and not make any sudden moves. I'm trying not to turn <laughs> too fast to the right or left, yes. Okay, <laughs> all right. How, tell us about the scale of some of these programs. How, how big are they? Well, so just to give you a sense of the overall scale of, of uh, uh, our service community, we're talking about 39 organizations that participate in our database. Uh, 35 organizations are doing quality, uh, continuous quality improvement, meaning they're looking at all of the data they're collecting and figuring out ways to directly impact the program and the young people's experiences. And um, overall, we're serving, last year we served 7,500 St. Paul youth. Uh, which does not include the data for the St. Paul Public Schools. We just recently entered into an agreement with them where we get to share their data. So next year, hopefully, I'll be able to report to you that it's 14, it's, it, it's twice, as, twice as many kids. Okay. That was actually going to be one of my questions. How do you interface with the schools? I mean, you know, you, you don't want to just start cold on a whole new subject. Right. You want to kind of know where they're coming from, even just to ease the transition. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we already have some pretty robust partnerships. We have two schools that are serving as hubs for mm -hmm. after-school learning um, that are staffed by both St. Paul Public Schools employees as well as empl uh, employees from community-based organizations. So those are up and running, and um, there are kind of a couple of different plans afoot to see how those programs can be expanded. Um, also, we're in conversation with St. Paul Public Schools around trying to address some of these um, challenges for our society, including looking at the dropout rate, looking at um, credit recovery for young people, young high school students who have had um, sort of significant interruptions in their education, and really asking the question, how could it, is it possible that young people could earn credit in out-of-school time as the St. Paul Public Schools and out-of-school time organizations cooperate and formulate plans. Because um, as you know, one of the things that's coming to us is that each young person has to have an individualized learning plan. Mm -hmm. And at Sprockets, we believe that we can actually really be of assistance in that arena as young people are trying to figure out the things that they're interested in and pursuing those things. Okay. Um, how is after school learning different than what happens during the day? Is there a different dynamic that goes on? Do they come in in gangs? I mean, or, you know, <laughs> or groups? I think there is a different dynamic. I think for one, um, in after school time, you actually have the liberty to really meet students where they are, where they're at in terms of their interest level and, and to actually program to those interests. Um, so for example, you can have a young person come in and say that, you know, he's just gotten a new puppy. And you can keep talking about that puppy and come to find out that the thing that he's most interested in is, is sort of why, why the puppy behaves the way that he does. And so maybe that's an opportunity to bring in sort of psychology and um, family dynamics and all kinds of things in this sort of non-threatening way with this cute little puppy. In case you're just joining us, this is the St. Paul Forum, and I'm John Forty. Our guest this week is Einga Bokamba, Executive Director of Sprockets, and a organization dedicated to helping students outside of school hours. Not helping students, helping humans, right? It's yes. not about the schoolwork. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so tell me, give me an example of how young people's lives are impacted by part participation in, in after-school activities. Sure. Well, I'll tell you a story from a, a previous workplace. Uh, I had a young man whose name is Arlie, and he's nine now. And Arlie was uh, in my after-school program when I was the program manager at Pillsbury House and he's still participating uh, to this day. So last year he decided that he wanted to explore his options for the summer. And his mother had presented him with a couple of scenarios. One was that he could go to um, his home country in South America and stay for the summer, or he could stay right in South Minneapolis and participate in the arts program. So one day he found me and uh, I was putting up the schedule for the summer and looking at all of the various uh, different aspects of the logistics for four different groups going six different places ten different times a day it was quite a matrix and we had it all spread out along the wall and he just said well what's all this what what is all this so I started to explain to him the programming and the choice points and what his age group might be doing and the theme and he was like okay 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 that's very interesting I said is it he said it is it's fat he said that's really great I just need to know because I gotta talk to my mom I said really what are you talking to your mom about well I can go to Guatemala or I can stay here for the summer. So I just have to decide. I said, well, do you have an idea? He said, I think I'm going to stay here for the summer. I, I don't think I can really miss what's going on here. 
And those are his exact words. I'm, I'm not mm -hmm. sort of exaggerating. This is from, from the mouths of babes, right? This whole notion that they can actually shape their day is phenomenal. Psychologically, he was closer than his mother, wasn't he? Oh, I, yeah, I, I, he <laughs> was. Mom, you're going to agree with this. <laughs> <laughs> he needed to know the options. <laughs> That's very neat. Um, if there's one thing you could tell parents and teachers about how to best help kids, what would it be? I would say that um, one of the things that we're learning uh, through our research with Sprockets is that young people care about what they learn and adults tend to care about where the learning is happening. Mm -hmm. And if we can, as adults, sort of let go a little bit about the where, um, we can then start to have a conversation about all of the ways that young people are learning in every facet of their lives. And that really, to me, that's a real conversation starter. So in other words, how is it that we can approach learning in a, a more content neutral way and think more about the dynamics of learning? So for example, is the learner in control of his or her learning? Um, is, could, the, could the learner accelerate? We have all kinds of programs and I am a former teacher and so I remember thinking about a lot of these things, I still think about a lot of these things relative to my advanced students, my IB students, my advanced placement students, they get to control the pace of their learning. What we do with the kids that we label intermediate or somehow have sort of academic deficiencies is that they don't have as much control over the pace of their learning. What if they could accelerate or, or, or do the opposite? What if they could control the content area a little bit more? And what if they could infuse that with their learning? What if they could make it kinesthetic? What if they could make it uh, visual? There are many, many different types of learning, I, I suppose, is my main message to, to parents and, and other teachers. It sounds content neutral, but it also kind of sounds form neutral in that and what we talk about place. It isn't really the place. It's not the form. It's mm -hmm. what, how the fire starts internally. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what Sprockets is. The, the tagline is find what moves you. And kids actually came up with that. There's a whole process to determine the name and the design and their little, they're, they're sprockets from a bicycle. Mm -hmm. And the whole idea is really, you know, you know the gear, you know what moves you and, and figuring out how to step into that. And what adults can do is helping kids figure that out. Okay, how to put pressure on that front pedal exactly. so, so it gets rolling around. Um, is this being studied by other metropolitan areas? It is actually, yes, and, and that's such a great question because we, uh, as part of the Wallace study, we are one of nine cities to receive monies to develop an out-of-school time system. And so our peers are Boston and Providence, um, Dallas, uh, Louisville, uh, Grand Rapids, et cetera. And one of the things that the Wallace Foundation has done is to create lots of opportunities to grow and learn um, from our peer uh, out of school time support uh, networks really. Mm -hmm. And so we are going to meet in Nashville, for example, in late April and do a cross city training where we learn about what other, what's working in other contexts. And then researchers are constantly sort of calling and wanting to visit us and study us. And we're, we're really excited about, we, we think we have something very special here in St. Paul, just in terms of the ways that all of our systems are working together. What's special about St. Paul? Say, say more about that. Um, I would say right now the conversation between St. Paul Public Schools and Sprockets and um, the way that the mayor has laid out lots of opportunities for young people in various programs. You, um, he just launched the Right Track Initiative for St. Paul um, Youth Jobs. And it, it's, it's, we all meet together and talk about the, the gaps in our programming as well as the advantage of, of being in a system together. And so part of the trick here is acknowledging that we have to listen for those gaps and then figure out ways to address those gaps as opposed to having to own the right answer. Okay. Um, and I'm always circling back because what you, what you said three minutes ago is always so fascinating. It's just kind of getting to my heart at this point. Um, <laughs> you talked about finding the fire or finding, you know, w what moves you. Yes. Um, is there a protocol for that? I mean, are you, do, are you doing it at that kind of retail level when a kid comes and says, do you like do diagnostic questions? What, how, do you, how do you do that? Well, you, I mean, it's done in a couple different ways. One is that in terms of the ways that the parents interact with the parent portal, if you will, or the, or the program finder, um, the parents know what, move, what moves the, their children. So they are basically you know, going into our website and, and narrowing the category of programming by the type of adventure that they'd like their young person to have. So 
if you know that your son is really into sailing, you're going to type in sailing and 10 sailing programs are going to come up. And so there's a, there's a way that um, the parents are really our best allies because they are doing a lot of the work in terms of pointing the child in the right direction. The other piece I wanted to say is that our network of providers, they're, they're very tight. Um, they talk a lot about the things that they offer. We have meetings based on geographic areas, et cetera. And so what happens if a young person comes into a program and it's very apparent to the program director that it's not a fit, the program director will call the program director in another area and say, I have this young person. I think she would really enjoy your, your gymnastics program. Would you be willing to reach out to the parents? And, and that transpires so that we can all work together. Again, because we don't, I don't need to personally own that child's experience if I know another program is going to be a better fit. Um, I'm, I'm going to ask you for a specific example because it seems to me like there are going to be times when parents set up their kids and the kids are like, my parents don't understand me that well. You, know, <laughs> you, you have to ever go back and explain to the parents that your kid actually wants to not go sailing, wants to go wrestling or something different? I think that that, I think that, that, that has happened. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. And, and the good news is that, again, when you're talking about trying to support the professional development of youth workers, you're talking about folks who are really highly skilled in conflict resolution. Um, I, I really hope one day that we can have a president who's a youth worker because, again, wars will be averted. I mean, there, there, are, there are skill sets that people have where they can work intergenerationally and, and not compromise the needs of the young person, but also address the needs of the parent because the parent needs to feel ultimately that he or she is making uh, the right decision. And so I think the youth workers are really skilled at addressing those things. Okay, uh, I'd like to talk about some specific organizations you work with. That I don't know if you have specific ones you want to showcase, but why don't we start with the one we're sitting in? Okay. You actually have an interface with St. Paul interface with St. Paul Neighborhood Network. Yes, yes, it's true. And so um, this very organization participates in what we call um, learning from multiple data sets. And so uh, what what's happened in the past is that. Um, teams from this organization have attended our events two, three, four times a year, and they've brought all their data with them, and they laid it all out on a huge table and looked at it to try to parse together what has actually happened over the past, let's say, quarter. What's happening in terms of youth participation? Do you see any trends? Do you see any gaps in service? And then looking at, okay, so then what questions does that raise in terms of how this particular organization uh, moves forward to serve young people and then looking at the other sets of data. So there, there's also um, this organization in particular um, participates in SEO, which is looking at social emotional development. And so looking at that data and wondering, okay, so we see that young people feel um, very resilient around these particular issues. Uh, okay, that's great, but there's not growth in other areas. So what can we do to promote that? And so it, it's really a commitment on the part of the organization because what you're talking about ultimately the bottom line is giving up staff time towards the, the very fires that exist for all of us, whether it's looking at the budget or problem solving or some interpersonal staff things, et cetera. It's taking the time to come to a retreat, if you will, about three or four times a year and really digging into that data. And it's, it's pretty exciting to see people really commit to that. And, and uh, this organization has done a great job. Okay. Um, we only have about four minutes left. Okay. And so I know you wanted to talk about the portal, but is there both a parent portal and a child portal, or is it just a single portal? Right now, the program finder is, is neutral, um, but it is really geared towards parents. Um, and uh, that is to say teens can also look that there's a teen portal as well. And the, the program finder is just, it's just great. I just can't say enough about it. It's kind of a one-stop shop. Uh, it's kind of like super target or something. I don't know what to compare it to, but uh, just the idea that you can really dig down into all kinds of details. You can limit the, the program by the, the geographic area of the city that you want to, to have the program occur in, by the age, by the gender of the child, by um, the type of activity, and then really narrow down. And then I would just encourage parents to go to those actual programs and observe. Um, we and Sprocket say that the, the quality pieces are outstanding. People should be able to identify right away, are the children being respected? Do they have relationships with caring adults? 
Are the adults present, mindful? Uh, do the kids have decision-making power? Uh, is it a safe environment? And really looking at that and deciding, is this a good fit for, for your child? So. Okay. And we are going to put your website up now. Great. Rocketstpaul.org. Is that That's correct? That's correct. Okay. Yes. And um, there's also an, a, a network conference coming up March 3rd. Yes, there is a, a network conference. It's going to be great. Uh, I am very nervous about it, but I'm excited to say that I will be delivering the keynote about how to move into action using data. So we're looking at how do we formulate basically a, a, a way to move forward in terms of what is our statewide commitment to young people. And so I'm very excited about it. Okay. What day were you born on? Sunday. Okay. Because that's what Iyengar means, correct? That's correct. Okay. Yes. There are millions of Iyengas okay. around the world. Okay. And Bokamba means? Leader of the people. Okay. So you're, you're set for the job. You are, in, in my humble opinion, you are what a lot of parents want their kids to grow up to be like. Well, so, thank you. That's yeah. very sweet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anything else you want to cover before we're, we're just about out of time? Well, I just really appreciate this opportunity and just think you guys are doing great work. So thanks for being part okay. of our network. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. We've been talking with Ienga Bokamba, Executive Director of Sprockets, an organization dedicated to helping youth outside of school hours. That's all we've got time for. That's it this week on the St. Paul Forum. See you next week.